presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to John in Orlando. Hey, John, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom, good afternoon to you. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I want to thank you, first of all, before I ask you about the thought, uh, you and Tim Ward and all the gang at DFNN, I had a really, really good year after the October call you guys made. My 401k is up 72%. Congratulations, of, man. A uh, couple of things I made with Coinbase and other stocks that I made, and I've had a good, good year. And we appreciate you growling and prowling with us, man. That's a beautiful thing. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I hope you all had a very good weekend. Of course, uh, a lot of interesting news. We had CrowdStrike. Of course, you had Biden stepping down. We can all talk about it a little bit. Before we get too much into anything, I want to bring this all to your attention. Of course, we are doing our uh, July Tiger Dollar sale. Uh, we are going to extend that. You see here right now, it ends August 1st. The ads will reflect that. Um, there is no better time to do this. And the reason why we're extending this, because we don't really do this, is because we have so many Honestly, pretty cool things coming up for the rest of this month and then beginning it in August. First, of course, first and foremost, Basil's subscriber webinar tomorrow at Tuesday. That is from 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, that is for all of his subscribers. So if you're listening to us right now and you're a subscriber and you want to get in there, it's very simple. I've put out some updates uh, at least in the, the opening call newsletter itself of how to get in. I'm going to do another one by the end of the day today. Uh, you definitely want to get in there. If it is your first time subscribing to the opening call, like if you've, if you've never done it before, go ahead and do it. If for whatever reason the letter does not work for you, uh, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, and that goes for all of our newsletters. And, of course, when you're a subscriber to the opening call newsletter as well, you get access uh, just to a bunch of subscriber webinars that he has done in the past. Uh, again, there's no better time. Of course, we have Larry coming up the 26th on the live Friday. And then if you guys haven't seen, on the front page of TFNN.com, once you get your Tiger Dollars, hop over to the far right. We have Tom O'Brien, a live trading webinar straight from the man himself. Now, what is really cool about this, okay, is you get a one month access to Market Insights with this, and a signed copy of The Art of Timing the Trade. This is an award-winning book he has. It is fantastic. He's going over and trading the SPX, the Qs, the NDX, and then, of course, you have zero day to expiration options as well, which are super cool. Uh, I'm personally looking forward to that just because uh, I think it's a very neat vehicle. So go ahead and check that out. Of course, how to start your trading day, best times of day to trade, how to enter and exit trades. And listen, you know, I know we have a lot of listeners here who are, you know, new to the market or trying to figure out how to, you know, tackle this beast. And if you are new, there is no better way to start trading than watch someone who's been trading uh, for decades. It is a great time. It is so invaluable. Um, so go ahead and check that out. Of course, you get uh, some massive savings. You get Tiger Dollars first and foremost, and then apply them uh, to the purchase. Of course, we have 20%, 30%, and 40% bonus tier. Uh, for those Tiger Dollars. Let's take a look at what we have going on right now. So a little bit of rebound, and I think a lot of this might have to do with Biden stepping back. In the E-mini up about a percentage point, uh, SPY up about 1% as well. The Russell Future still going up at 1.42%. The NQ is recovering, especially on the news uh, with NVIDIA, and of course, Taiwan Semiconductor's pretty stellar um, report. You have the Dow futures, let's see, up about 0.31%, and same with the Dow Jones Industrial itself. You have the metals kind of just moving sideways, a little slightly lower. This is probably some profit-taking after some decent movement up the past week, uh, but we are still not uh, done with that whole run yet. Again, I strongly recommend checking out Tim Ord and Tom O'Brien uh, when they're on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and of course, getting access to the Gold Report newsletter by Tom O'Brien. Uh, fantastic report today. Um, Again, if you're not subscribed, you should check it out for sure. Again, with that 30-day money-back guarantee, if you don't like it. Tesla up 4.92%, still dynamic sideways, kind of slightly down right now. Uh, the dollar 
so you, okay, what? Well, yeah, your P and central bank is not going to lower rates after they did. So, you know, no longer maintaining that divergence with the Fed. That can kind of move the dollar up a little bit as well. But we're still in that lower trading range. And you can see we really broke down um, below that 104 level. Now, we're testing it back up and bouncing off the 104 level. But this is still much lower in that trading range. And I do believe that a lot of people are still anticipating a September rate decrease. You have Meta up a bunch, Google up 2.57%, so the end queues are doing pretty well with all that. Apple up 0.33, Lucid recovering, and I believe, I believe, Rivian is also doing all right today as well. Yep, so bouncing off that 16 level, and uh, it'll be nice to see what goes on. We have a lot of, we have a lot of earnings that came out. Of course, you have the uh, automobile earnings coming out as well. GM is going to do pretty well, ideally, on that. I believe Tesla's, don't quote me on this, I need to look it up, uh, but I believe Tesla's coming out sometime this week, if not tomorrow, which is why the news of them putting out Tesla Optimus, which is their humanoid robot, is, uh, you know, gives me some pause because it tends to happen this way, right? Where maybe they don't have as good of earnings report or something negative is about to come out and he pads that uh, with some pretty sweet news. Uh, we can talk a little bit about that as well. Of course, uh, the number one news story is going to be Biden pulling back and endorsing Kamala Harris. Super interesting. I mean, this we, we've had, what, two major historical events occur in, in the past you know, week and a half, two weeks. Obviously, with the attempted assassination of uh, candidate Donald Trump and then Joe Biden stepping out as well. This is a pretty... I mean, it's a risky move, right? Um, we're so late in the game. I mean, this is the end of July. We have everything cooking on in November. It'll be really interesting to see. But what I, I think is neat, and I, I talked to some of uh, you know the subscribers here, the clients here, and some people that I work with as well. It's like, what is the young person's perspective on all this? And I, I think a lot of young people feel like whatever is going on in in politics, at least on the presidential kind of level, uh, doesn't really reflect what matters to them in a major way, or at least that's not how it's portrayed in the media. Um, and so I, I think these major fails in the sense that, you know, having to pull Biden out, which in reality is due to probably declining health or performance, at least in some capacity, and putting someone in randomly at the end. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Donald Trump running, who I, I know does have a lot of young people who support him, uh, but he's not the RNC's first pick. I think this is going to force the DNC and the RNC uh, to kind of take a different, you know, approach to providing uh, potential candidates and also who they decide to give the nominee uh, to. Um, so that is is really interesting in a major way. I, I think there's probably been, you know, a standard operating practice for quite a while, and I think that's going to go away. Uh, with all of this, and, and we're, we're kind of seeing these last, I would say, you know, kind of contractions of this old way of doing things. So it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, what candidates we get, you know, next election cycle after this one, uh, because I think we're going to see uh, some some new approaches and new platforms as well, uh, which is kind of neat. Folks, uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're going to get into the markets this time and uh, kind of see what we have going on. Stay right there. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, 
It has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Tigers, it's back the annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoot filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, let's take a look. Of course, we have Automakers Report earnings this week. Uh, let's take a look at GM in particular. Obviously, Ford, Stellantis going up right now as well. Take a look at Ford, excuse me, General Motors, GM. Up about 2.64%. Uh, the forecast report a solid adjusted profit of 2.75 per share. That's up 44.2% from a year earlier and 45.46 uh, billion in revenue, which is also up 1.6% over the prior year period. Uh, this compares the LE, uh, excuse me, the LSEG estimates for Ford Motors that call for adjusted earnings per share of 68 cents, which is down 5.2%. And then Ford's automotive revenue is expected to increase 3.8% compared to the year earlier uh, to $44 billion. Nuts. So the earnings report is going to be on the, excuse me, before the open tomorrow. Uh, Ford is also scheduled to report Wednesday afternoon after the markets close. And then uh, Stellantis, which owns Chrysler, uh, going to have half first half results Thursday morning. And they report biannually, which is kind of interesting. So I think, you know, one of the things I could see occurring with this, and I'm talking more with the EVs, right, where you have a really knockout kind of quarter, um, but then the outward look is not as good. And this is something I could see happening uh, with GM. Uh, of course, I don't have all that data at all. Um, you're at least seeing it uh, with EVs as well. Uh, let's see here if there's any other things. Ford's, Ford's Ford guidance. For the year includes adjusted earnings before interest and taxes of between 10 billion and 12 billion free cash flow of 6.5 to 7.5. And then GM's guidance comes in at adjusted earnings of 12.5 billion to 14.5 or nine to 10 bucks a share and adjusted automotive, excuse me, automotive free cash flow in a range of 8.5 billion to 10.5. Interesting stuff going forward. Again, keep in mind, uh, Rivian as well has a report date of around August 8th. And it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now, one of the things that makes me a little bit nervous with Rivian, and, and when I say this, you can you can kind of apply this to everything, is when the news keeps getting on it, right? It's, oh, look, this is going to go up. Oh, every, you know, analyst has raised their price target. That's when you start getting to this pretty high saturation saturation point. I think you saw some profit taking in Rivian the past uh, few trading sessions, which is why you're on the down, but you bounce off right around that 16 level 
and uh, it remains to be seen kind of how that stays. I think a lot of people are holding that in. Of course, they're not going to have the same issues as Lucid in the sense that they have all that awesome uh, cash flow now from VW. Uh, and ideally, they're supposed to report uh, on August in August that they will be uh, profitable by the end of 2024. Now, if that's the case, I think this stock has a lot of room to run. I just spoke with someone this weekend who drives an R1, and he says he loves it. He says it's one of the best cars he's ever driven. Uh, he drives around a lot for work, and uh, he tried uh, to convince me to get one as well. Uh, super fascinating stuff. If that R2 comes out, I mean, around something like you know $45,000 price point, uh, that's really solid, you know? And this company can kind of take off from there. Uh, additionally, what I've been seeing with Rivian is a ton of the Amazon delivery vehicles, which I think is really impressive. They're very cool. Apparently, they're suited a little better um, than the VW Sprinter vans, excuse me, the uh, Mercedes Sprinter vans. Um, so a lot of cool stuff coming out of Rivian. And the fact that you're seeing it adopted, uh, definitely at least in St. Petersburg, is kind of neat to see. Uh, I hear that a lot from people who live up in Chicago and New York as well. Let's take a look at AMC quickly because everyone loves that stock. So they're up 4.2% right now. And so why is that? Okay, we'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, so the holding said on Monday that it had reached an agreement with creditors that extends up to 2.45 billion of debt maturities from 2026 to 2029 and beyond. The agreement will also allow AMC to reduce debt by 464 million by converting exchangeable notes into equity. The company has been grappling, of course, with the aftermath of the Hollywood strikes last year and really COVID as well. I would say that still affects them to some extent. Uh, strikes last year that shut down productions and affected theater chains across the country. See, under the terms of the deal, AMC will issue $1.2 billion of new secured term loans due 2029 uh, in consideration for an open market purchase of senior secured term loans due 2026. Uh, has units will also be about, let's see here if that matters. Yeah, I think one of the big things you could see coming out with AMC is if the Reddit guys get on it, right? Because these things have the insane potential uh, to run up with that. Uh, I mean, look, you can see here that massive volume is all going to be, you know, Wall Street bets, guys. But you can play around that. And I think a lot of these major private equity firms have understood that as well. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see. If you ever get that smell that is moving up, you need to get in quick and then get out just as quickly as well. Um, I'm seeing on... One of my little running kind of ticker lists is Jumia, which is nuts to think about. This stock blew up like, what, five years ago, maybe? God, it's been that long. Even higher than this, even longer than five years. That's great. Yep. 2021. No. Yeah, okay. In 2021. So not that long ago. Uh, still, obviously had a massive crash down. What is going on with it? I am not entirely sure. I've been trying to find out any kind of news on it that... That is substantial. Um, what are you worried about with these kind of low market cap, um, low volatility stocks is the ability for people to really just, you know, pump and dump it. And this is what happened with Jumia last time. I'm not seeing any conversation on it on the forums or anything like that that could show that there are a lot of people interested in Jumia. Um, the big thing with this company is that it, you know, is supposedly the Amazon of Africa. Now, you have some really cool developments, you know, in places like Ghana and Nigeria and all of that uh, to, to a point where you could start seeing infrastructure be built for commerce companies like this. I still think that's somewhat far out. And uh, it's I mean, it's moved up substantially. I, I mean, nearly. Yeah, roughly like 70 percent or something like that over the past few trading sessions. So if you're seeing that and you're seeing people talk about it, uh, be cautious and, you know, do your due diligence. Now, folks, I just got word that we have the man himself, Tom O'Brien, on the line. Tom, how are you doing? Hey, Jacob, how you doing, man? Doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing good. We have a market. We got a two-way market. It's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. We were talking about this in the office the other day. This is where, you know, trading uh, gets interesting, right? And you can make some pretty cool profits in the meantime, uh, tell me a little bit about the live trading event you're doing August 2nd. So we know Larry's been doing live trading events, very successful. Uh, I'm going to do a live trading event uh, a week from 
this Friday. Yep. And what we're going to be doing, of course, we're going to be using the out of time in the trade. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be trading the Qs, the SPY, the NDX 100 futures, the E mini futures, and, and here's the kicker, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the end of day options, the one day options. Those so, are what I'm so excited about. Tom, do you well, want to stay right there? We'll be right back after the break. Well done. Folks, stay right there. I'll be right back with Tom O'Brien. We'll see you soon. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds' investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup. I am joined by Tom O'Brien. Tom, before we went to the break, you're telling us about the live trading that you're doing August 2nd, which is not, not going to be this Friday, but the Friday afterwards. 
Talk about the zero DTE yeah. options. That's going to be cool. And not only that, but you're going over a bunch of stuff from the art of timing the trade, right? Your book. Yeah, so intraday, I'm sure, you know, most of the people in the den know what I do intraday. So for all the other folks out there, if you have time in the trade, the bottom line, it's all about price and volume intraday particularly, okay? So the way this is set up, it's $295. What you get for that, you get a signed copy of the Out of Time in the Trade. You get my newsletter for a month, plus we get the live session. Uh, inside of the live session, you know, we have plenty of option traders. And, you know, the end-of-day uh, options, I mean, they've been going on for a long time. I've been trading them for a long time also. Um, you know, they are, they got some firepower underneath them. There's no two ways about that. Particularly, that's why I started up the program that, you know, that when you, you were – that we have a two-way market. The two-way market is totally where it's at, meaning that you can actually get in, get out, intraday, uh, you know, long in, Scott. That's the real bottom line. So the way that I'm figuring I'm going to have this set up, we go 9 to 12, mm -hmm. will end up happening, you know, at the very beginning, I'm going to set up the aspect of so folks that really understand how to get the fastest execution also. You know, now when I say the fastest execution, I mean just being set up. So we're going to be set up before the fact, before the 930 bell, let's put it this way. You know, we might be trading the futures before that, but before the 930 bell, we're going to be set up specifically so that I can show whether it's the cues you're going into, whether it's the SPY, you know, whether it's the NDX or the E-minis, okay? So that simultaneously, let's just say that I say, okay, we're going to shut the, you know, the E-mini. If you're going to shut the E-mini, well, simultaneously, if you, you know, don't trade futures, well, no big deal. You could, you know, go and shut the S&P, the SPY, or you could go for the, you know, the SPXS yes. or the SPXL if we're going long. Okay, so um, it's, it's. You know, you get, we get the equity traders we can do, we get the futures traders, and, of course, the option traders. And yeah. there's plenty of equity traders now that do trade the one-day options because Absolutely. the volatility is awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> Literally. So volatility, I, you know, is a trader's best friend. There's no doubt about it because if you, if you get a two-way market going, you're in good shape. And I believe, you know, that we have a two-way market, like, you know, today today is just a bounce in a market that wants lower price, which totally makes sense, you know what I mean? You know, you got to – Europe was up today, the DAX was up, you know. I suspect when we're done in another 20 minutes here, you're going to see the volume is light, you know. We'll see whether this can bounce another day. But So we're going to we're gonna have some um, real action. Uh, so it's a week from Friday. You can check it out on the front page of TFNN. Don't forget about the, the target always goes to the end of uh, this month. And uh, we're, we get action, man. That's right. Tom, thank you so much for calling in. I am looking forward to this live trading event. I know others are as well. Okay, man. You have a great right. one and a safe one. And thanks for the, the, doing the program, Dick. Absolutely. Take care, Tom. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and folks, that's really it. Even that insight that he has on the two-way market today being a bounce in a market that went slower, those are those insights that you're only going to get after trading for a long time, you know? So there, this is a great value uh, for this webinar. Again, you also get the art of timing the trade, uh, which is Tom's book, and then a month of market insights. I mean, come on. That's an insane value for it. So check it out. Again, you have the Tiger Dollar sale, and that'll be fantastic. One thing I want to say as well uh, we'll do these in the Discord. I'm going to send out emails anyways about it. Um, but if you ever need to figure out kind of how to get into the Discord, if you've gotten out of it, you just go to the Services tab. Go to Tiger's Den Trading Room by TFNN. Um, if you are joining for a webinar or something like that, you do not need to pay for this service itself. You, you're already going to get it included in purchasing a live trading event or webinar. And just scroll down. These are the steps to get in. We even have the invite link and you just got to email me and I will make sure that you get in no problem. Okay, what is the crazy thing that has happened recently? And that's going to be CrowdStrike. What an amazing move to the downside here on CrowdStrike. So down 13% right now, that's 40 bucks off of the top from 398, nearly $400 to 265. So what happened? Obviously, the big news on Friday is they tried to push an update 
and uh, it bricked people's computers. So how does this all work? I can talk a little bit uh, about the tech behind it uh, because it is actually quite interesting. You've heard me talk about some things like this similarly before, and this is also going to be a way for me uh, to defend my position on cybersecurity because I still think it's a super valid um, area to invest in. I think you're getting more companies uh, than have been in the past investing in uh, certain cybersecurity services, and uh, that's not going to slow down anytime soon, but this all has to do uh, with doing due diligence if you want to invest. Obviously, Sentinel One is up today, uh, Palo Alto as well. You actually do have Kathy Woods buying CrowdStrike <laughs> on the fall down, which is interesting. And it's like the question is, you know, will CrowdStrike lose a lot of their uh, customer base? And that's kind of hard to say, right? The, the way that this stuff works is it is so baked in uh, to the machine itself. And uh, I think people have used CrowdStrike for a long time. I think they have roughly like 30,000 um, clients around the world. And these are very large enterprises. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what essentially happened with CrowdStrike. And again, I say this because if you want to start investing in tech companies um, or anything to do with that, you, it's important to know what's going on, and especially when things go wrong. So what essentially happened is the way that CrowdStrike, almost like anti-malware works, it's called Falcon. Um, but what it, what it is doing, it's looking for malware on systems, right? And so, you know, you have different rings of operation uh, within the computer. At the base level, you have ring zero, which is the kernel. And then you can go up one to, to user, right? Uh, kernel is basically runs the entire computer and tells the computer what to do on boot within the kernel. Uh, one what's important to know about that is it's very in- imperative. I've spoken about this with uh, Riot uh, Games, which you can invest in via Tencent, and how it's a little bit sketchy because they download anti-cheats onto your kernel, right? And the kernel is just giving instructions way for the computer to operate. And usually kernel commands don't go into user. And user commands certainly do not go into kernel um, because you can do a lot of damage, uh, like having people randomly access memory in computers. It's, it's just not a good time, right? So what CrowdStrike does is you could download Falcon onto the kernel, right? And the way that they've done this is by making the computer recognize it like it's a driver, okay? Uh, the, the problem with having something recognized as a driver is it's kind of hard to constantly re-up and revalidate a driver when you have to add something new like anti-malware companies need to do uh, pretty often. Uh, when we return, we'll talk a little bit more about that and move on to something else um, once we finish the CrowdStrike conversation. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Before we went to the break, we were talking about CrowdStrike and what happened with them and kind of the potential aftermath of all of this. Long story short, uh, they have their program on a very essential uh, layer of computer operations, and uh, it didn't need to be checked, any of the updates, uh, because of how they structured the whole thing. This was a major problem. It didn't have to be checked by, by Microsoft, is what I'm saying. Uh, so there was no recertification happening on these updates because of the nature of how they were pushing these things out and uh, running the software. And essentially, it, uh, <laughs> it pointed to a memory area that was just full of zeros and nothing. When that happens, something called a uh, null point dereference, uh, the computer uh, essentially blue screens and you get a pretty critical error. And so that's what occurred. Um, obviously the impacts of this have been uh, pretty strong. I had a buddy who was supposed to go uh, to Georgia for something pretty important on Sunday and that uh, didn't work out for him because of all of this. Obviously you have 13% to the downside right now just today uh, with CrowdStrike. You know, you, you run an issue as well where a lot of people have never heard of something like CrowdStrike, and this is the first kind of interaction uh, they get with the company. Um, this is extraordinarily damaging uh, to the company. Of course, more information has to come out of, of what happened on CrowdStrike's end. I mean, what I'm talking about is kind of just what was gathered from the, the error messages on the bricked computers. Not bricked, I shouldn't say that, but on the blue screen computers. Um, but you know that it's a pretty substantial error, you know, and something they teach you about a lot in school, which is you know be aware of of, of things pointing to null, right? Um, so it's pretty bad, and we'll wait to see what happens. In the meantime, of course, and this I think underlines my kind of commentary on the idea of of, of how severe uh, the cybersecurity world is right now, and, and and how important it is to be protected. You have a bunch of emails being sent out. Under, with a file name called CrowdStrike-Hotfix.zip, and uh, it's just going to basically remotely control your uh, computer. Uh, so that's malware, and it's not good. Additionally, you've had, let's see, Delta Airlines cancel 600 flights on Monday in the wake of the cyber outage, which is insane. Uh, U.S. airlines have largely recovered. Delta is still struggling to return to normal. American Airlines had called off 1% of its flights on Monday. Uh, United Airlines canceled less than 1%. Delta is still struggling. It's about 16% of their flights. This just goes to show you how important this is. And something on this level, I think, you know, with Delta, with 16% of their flights being canceled, is uh, kind of going to be cause for them to move uh, somewhere else. I'm, I'm sure there really will be somewhat of an impact on CrowdStrike. But the main question is, is it an overreaction, right? And uh, it did get downgraded a little bit. But you have Kathy Woods buying a ton of the stock, uh, which is unique in and of itself. So make that what you will. Uh, but regardless, uh, this is pretty substantial. We've had a lot of like newsworthy things come out recently, which is, which is nice. As they say, nothing usually happens. And this is... Uh, Pretty interesting news. So, it remain to be seen. What else is going on with that? Let's look at Sentinel One. These are just some competitors in a sense. Up 7.44%, insane. That's still a good price point for that company too, which is probably why it's getting so much more love than Palo Alto. 
uh, but still up about 0.87% uh, as well. And Microsoft, luckily, um, they did nothing wrong, which is good, even though Windows were the ones mainly targeted. Um, but just by the nature of how CrowdStrike uh, was doing things, it was kind of getting around some of the ways that Microsoft validates its drivers. So CrowdStrike wasn't updating their drivers necessarily, but they were updating what the drivers powered. And um, there's nothing, you know, kind of, I would suppose, in Microsoft's kind of uh, way of doing business that would check uh, for that immediately. Uh, pretty interesting stuff nonetheless. All right, let's take a look here at Google and get all my stuff pulled up. One second as this loads. We'll just do this for the time being. Up 2.7%. Uh, why the news on this is Alphabet is set to report double digit Q2 growth. If AI adoption, ballooning costs are also a major issue uh, for them. So the Google parent Alphabet is expected to report a nearly 14% rise in quarterly revenue. It's fourth straight quarter of double digit growth driven by steady demand for its artificial intelligence powered cloud computing services and an uptick in the ad market. Uh, search giant second quarter report on Tuesday, the first among the big technology companies this season could offer further insight into the uptake of AI services. Google is launching the new Pixel devices. Alphabet's AI investment will be closely watched. In January, March period, the company CapEx jumped 91% to 12 billion, which is obviously a little bit nerving, <laughs> nerve wracking, excuse me. Um, Sundar Pichai assured that the AI integrations were boosting demand for its cloud and search businesses. The company's operating expense in the second quarter ended June, uh, likely rose more than 32%. But they're, uh, have, oh yeah, that's another one biting cybersecurity startup, Wiz, for roughly $23 billion. Uh, one of the big things with this as well, what we've been talking about, is one, their carbon output is substantially higher after training these AIs and, and making them do things on the cloud, uh, which is in some capacity could, you know, affect them, you know, with, with the whole kind of idea of, of, of green investing. Uh, but what's unique is I've also been seeing some conversation around uh, more kind of nuclear energy, especially coming from Google, and it's going to have to be done. This is going to lower that CapEx level for them going forward, and this is going to expand out this AI, these data servers. The cloud is going to be, if you think it's massive now, I mean, think like biblical behemoth. And this is what these kind of big data servers are going to be like, and there is so much cost for companies like Google uh, to kind of to kind of run their data servers and um, you're seeing things like Oaklo right now which is Sam Altman's uh, nuclear startup pop up today nearly five percent I think he had Kathy Woods take a stock uh, excuse me take a position in that as well which is quite interesting um, one of the things I want to bring uh, to your guys's attention with that is before you invest you know kind of I say willy-nilly or whatever the term you want to use is uh, the expression do your due diligence on this uh, seriously, okay? So this is coming from July 22nd. That's today. This is Nano Nuclear Energy. They're down 20%, okay? Nano is one of the ones that ran up uh, pretty substantially. You can see in the middle of June, it had a high of 37.51. Uh, uh, they have a securities fraud investigation by Block and Leventon, uh, which is pretty nuts. So let's talk about it a little bit. Hunterbrook Media reported that as of July 2024, the U.S. New Nuclear Regulatory Commission does not list nano among the companies that have begun pre-application activities for the kind of reactor that nano is pitching. Obviously, followed their publication of this report. Um, it got annihilated down 20 percent right now. And so it's super the, the major point of this is that you got to be careful when you're seeing these new kind of startup nuclear companies, which you're going to see a lot of them coming on in the future, especially ones that are doing these smaller uh, modular reactors. Uh, but just to send the point home of how important this kind of power is going to be going forward, and this is beyond just economic, um, th th this goes to like cultural and societal. Uh, you have France now making a pretty good amount of money importing, excuse me, exporting uh, nuclear power to Italy to cool them. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a short segment.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, we have a short segment right now, but we're going to talk a little bit about NVIDIA up 4.7% today. Uh, why is that? Well, one of the major problems I had seen going forward for NVIDIA, uh, they were still able to get their chips here, but it looks like that was going to be tightened a little bit, and that's exporting them uh, to China, or at least selling them to China. They were able to get around uh, some of the big bans that the government had imposed, but it seems like that wasn't going to be the case going forward. I thought this was a major uh, issue for them, but it seems like they are working on a specific China chip, uh, which is very good move on them, especially if you're a shareholder. So let's see here, NVIDIA, which is attempting to work around sanctions put in place last year by the Biden administration that limit the export of high-end technology to Beijing. They are retooling three different chips for the China-bound market. Reuters reported Monday uh, that it is also working on a version of its B200 chip, uh, which is part of its new Blackwell series of AI powering processors that it can sell to China-based customers without falling foul of the U.S regulations. Let's see here, China accounted for around 10.4 billion in overall revenues for NVIDIA last year, but that tally was sharply lower than in previous years owing to those tightened restrictions. So this is a quote from the finance chief, our data center revenue in China is down significantly from the level prior to the imposition of the new export control restrictions in last October. Uh, we expect the market in China to remain very competitive going forward. Yeah, so this is really 
solid uh, for them as well. And in some other news uh, for NVIDIA, this works out uh, for them, is going to be Elon Musk's XAI. The training cluster for this AI is absurd. It is 100,000 H100 GPUs, uh, which, which is massive. But here lies kind of the example I've been, I've been saying, or the potential for this, is are they gonna buy the Blackwell? Are they gonna buy Blackwell in that amount? I don't know. I, I think this is one of the major problems going forward, at least in the next few quarters, uh, with some of these chip makers. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. It's been great filling in for Tom. He'll be back tomorrow. Uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, with Tommy O'Brien in the morning market kickoff. Folks, have a great rest of your evening. <laughs>